Hi there, this is Sharon with SimplyCanning.com. Um, it's been asked of me to do a tour of my garden and show you what I'm doing. Um, I use a heavy mulch system, kind of a Back to Eden method. If you've ever seen that video, do, uh, do a Google search on Back to Eden Garden, I think is the name of the website. But um, it's basically a heavy mulch, and so that's what I have going on here. Um, it's not a picture-perfect garden, no better homes and garden cover pictures going on here, but um, I enjoy it and so I'm going to just take you on a little tour. Welcome to my yard. Okay, so I'm standing at the gate and this is um, a little rock garden area is what I call it. In here I have planted spinach and Swiss chard. I've got it harvested pretty well back because we eat lots of spinach and Swiss chard. Anyway, that's my spinach, and then I have some Swiss chard over here. Lots of grass is kind of coming up. I need to get in here and get that pulled. Not a big deal, though. I have found with the, the wood chips have improved this garden well enough that, <clears throat> excuse me, weeding is really not, not a major ordeal like it used to be. I still have to come out and weed, but um, the weeds seem to pull up fairly well from the ground. So this fence here I had planted some sweet peas on but only a few germinated so there's only a couple of sweet peas on there there's one right there um, and they're actually I've got blooms and I've got some sweet peas on there my kids come out and graze and so not a lot of that actually makes it to the house but that's okay I don't mind that at all. And of course I've got my beautiful little solar lantern, not, not lanterns, solar canning jars here. Um, treasure again, thank you very much. She sent those to me and I really appreciate it. I can see those from my front yard. I used to have them on the fence here behind me but that got too shady. And so I thought this would be a perfect place to hang them all up. Anyway, back to the veggies. Over here, I have another video when I actually planted this little garlic patch. So you'll have to look for that. I'll try to put a link to it. But in that midst right there is garlic and then a bunch of carrots that actually volunteered. And I went ahead and let the carrots grow. I've had to thin them quite a bit because I don't want them to crowd out my garlic. But um, I thought that was just kind of unique. The garlic is doing well as far as I can tell from the tops. Of course the harvest will tell this fall whether, whether I actually have nice big bulbs or not. But it's going well. And then on either side of that, here I have some lettuce. It's already starting to droop from the heat. Um, it's late morning right now. But there's some lettuce there. And then I have lettuce on the other side over there. Down here is some kohlrabi. And it's really, really doing well. I've grown kohlrabi before and um, it does okay. But this kohlrabi just really loves this corner here. So, and there's a random coffee can with holes in it. I don't know what that was for. <laughs> Probably my son's. Let's see, over here, there's a tree growing. I don't know if you can see it in the midst of this wood chips, but I have a yellow squash planted. This, okay, this is my potato patch. And this is how we normally grow potatoes. Now in here, I have um, obviously this big rock wall and I just kind of created a bed around it and I have a variety of herbs and some flowers um, I have one rose bush I've got chives I've got parsley thyme okay here's a, some um, a bed I built with cinder blocks this first this side has one cabbage that I found actually stayed over from last year from last uh, last year's garden so I moved it in here and it's it's still growing. I don't know if cabbage will produce a cabbage on the second year, but I'm finding out. And then I have some other cabbage growing in there and they're still pretty small. And then lots of carrots. I sewed some carrots in with it. Um, it's way too thick. I need to get in there and thin it out. So, you know, if your carrots look this thick, you need to thin it. Um, and then a little bit of lettuce is scattered in there as well. See that bucket in the middle there? That is a worm bin. What I do is I drilled holes in the sides of the bucket, put uh, scraps and stuff and uh, leaves and things like that in there, and then I have worms growing in there. And then the worms can come in and out of the garden. And they actually, this is sort of another experiment, and it seems to be working pretty well. The hardest thing is 
that what I can't overwater this bed at all otherwise it fills that bucket up with water and of course I drown my worms which is not a good thing so I have one of those in there I'll do another video more detailed on how I did that this is just an overview and then I actually have another one in this bed too can't see it as well but this bed has all my onions and then a scattering of lettuce and spinach which is bolting I need to pull that out and um, it's doing really really well this area here is actually where our potato bed was last year and so all the potatoes you see right in front of me are volunteers and I just decided to just let them grow over here this is a dwarf apple tree and underneath that I planted some kale first year that I've grown kale and it seems to be doing well I also have some lamb's quarter in there oh I just noticed I think there's some spinach in there that's also bolting it's that time of year spinach doesn't last very long for me in our climate there's some mint in that container and some more mint in that container and I also put a petunia in there each one of those just for fun along this fence line I have sunflowers and um, sweet peas growing and then I also put in some compute uh, computers cucumbers in there as well my cucumbers aren't doing real well so I'm not sure why here's another bed with onions then I also planted some radishes and I let those radishes go to seed um, and then there's marigolds in there also and here is where the not so pretty stuff comes in I've got two ladders here that I use every year to trellis up uh, not pickling cucumbers but regular cucumbers and I have planted and replanted and planted and replanted cucumbers and they keep dying so those are nasturtiums there that you see if you can see them um, and there's one and there is actually one little cucumber growing but I have to decide what I'm gonna do because it's late and the ones on the other side are just they're not coming up um, one came up and it got eaten by something so I don't know if that's gonna work this year here is um, a potato bin that I made out of a piece of plastic lettuce or lettuce lattice and I'm growing potatoes in that and I'm doing the <clears throat> whole burying it with mulch as it grows and it sort of seems to be working really well this one I use I'm using actually uh, dirt really uh, good mulched up dirt and um, with some straw around the edge just to hold it in there so it doesn't come all through the holes and it's doing really well I have another one on the other side the other one over there I'm using just straw and it's not doing so well so this is that's sort of my experiment um, this is a apricot tree or is it a peach no this one's the apricot tree I have pickling cucumbers just starting right there there's another peach and an apricot over there and let me move to my row area okay this is um, a section where I actually plant in rows these first four rows is are rows are corn and you can see they're just starting to sprout I use a drip watering system here um, I've planted pole beans along the fence line again they're just starting to sprout and so I won't try to take a video of that because there's really not much there yet these two rows here are the three plants you see are cabbage and then I have broccoli in there in the rest of those rows everything's still real small my broccoli was kind of sporadic as far as germination you can see it came up mostly at the other end and so I'm thinking that might be a water issue and then right here I have two rows of beans the ones you see on the right I planted um, two weeks earlier than the ones you see on the left and so obviously there's more plants there which is normal I try to kind of so they don't all come on at once and then right down the center of it I planted some more parsnips which have not come up yet and then this last little row where I have that fence I planted peppers all along there and unfortunately something is eating them or something's wrong because eight of them have died and five of them look beautiful and healthy and doing fine so it's kind of weird I'm wondering if I have grubs or something underneath I'm gonna have to figure out what's going on with that okay so I just walked down to the other end of that row area I was standing over there oh I forgot to show you um, on the other side of uh, over there I have two tom uh, not tomato pumpkins planted and then we've got some raspberries started over there as well and then you can see there's a pile of leaves 
and I'm gradually taking and spreading out over the yard as or over the garden as things sprout because I don't want to cover up the seeds and then I've got a pile of wood chips that I'm using also um, this corn has grown up and so we just the other day spread a whole bunch of leaves between the rows I don't know if you can tell that from the video but as soon as the corn was up so I knew I wasn't going to be burying those seeds too deep I put a nice deep layer of leaves over here behind me is my uh, tomato area. Um, I have planted Mar Marzano tomatoes. I think that's how you pronounce it. They're a paste tomato. And that's what this row is here. <coughs> and then on the, just on the other side of the fence, I've planted a little row of basil. And they're pretty small still. But basil and tomatoes grow together well. And so I just used filled up that area with some basil and then this other row here is the first two that you see those are a cherry tomato and then those back there are a beefsteak tomato and then back in the back here I've got some tires some tractor tires and these are a new addition to the garden this year these two are doing pretty well um, I'm finding I've got lots of grubs in these tires because we filled them with, uh, I think they came, I think it came from the manure that we got from down the road. We had some alpaca manure, which is wonderful manure, and I will use it again, but I'm going to need to treat it somehow to get rid of the grubs. So this first one has cantaloupe, and it's doing great. This next one has, oh, and what mostly what you see there is some radishes and some marigolds and I plant that mostly to try to repel the squash bugs and I did that in all of these both of these tires this is watermelon and it's not doing so well this is another area where I've planted and replanted and they just keep dying yeah if you look here here's the plant and you can see just above the ground it's been chewed off and so I'm thinking that's that's grubs or slugs. Now, we live in a really dry area, and so slugs, we just never get slugs. But that's what, I mean, that's the symptom of slugs. So, I'm not sure. But I know we have grubs. I always assumed they ate the roots from, from under the ground. But if anybody knows what that might be, please leave a comment. I would love to know. So, I had another one planted, and so I covered it up with a milk jug until I get something figured out to protect that one so hopefully it will grow and then I just noticed I have a little sprout here coming up of another one so I'm gonna have to get that one protected too now these last two tires over here we actually filled those up with just wood chips um, they were very well aged wood chips they're like almost four I think they were like three or four years old and uh, it was sort of an experiment to see what happens. This one is doing horribly. I've planted and replanted again. We've been pulling grubs out of it by like the hundreds almost. Um, that is our chicken yard just on the other side of that fence. And so I've just been digging them up and throwing them over, the chick over to the chickens. And they absolutely love them. They see me come over there and they all come running. This one has an acorn squash in it. And it's actually doing well so I'm not sure why the grubs are killing everything in this tire and not in this tire this is acorn squash and I've planted I think it was butternut squash in this one three or four times now so maybe it's maybe it's the type of plant I don't know I should go get another acorn squash go down to the garden center and buy a plant maybe I'll do that anyway so that is pretty much it like I said, there's our chicken yard right next to the garden, so that's really handy because uh, it's got lots of shade over there. You can't tell just from this little area, but it goes back around those lilac trees. And it's really handy because any scraps from the garden go right over the fence. So I hope that was helpful. If anybody has any questions about um, specific things that I'm doing in the garden, feel free to ask in the comments. Um, below. Well, if you're on YouTube, you can ask in the comments or you can just email me at Sharon at simplycanning.com um, and ask me questions. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, I hope if it was helpful and you have a great day. I guess that's it. <laughs>